Okay, this is my first webinar, so uh, bear with me as we go through this. Um, basically, we'll go through the presentation and then we'll have questions and answers afterwards. A um, little bit about myself. My name is Shannon Engel. I've been growing pumpkins, giant pumpkins, since the year 2001. In the year 2000, um, I came in from feeding some our animals and uh, was eating breakfast and on TV there was some people moving pumpkins with skid steers and at that point I knew that that's what I wanted to do. Ever since then I've been a giant pumpkin grower. Um, the goals of this seminar and the goals of a first year grower is to have a successful season and to get a pumpkin to the scale. Um, at the end of the year, when we have the way off, if you have a pumpkin, I want you to bring it. It's, there's nothing, every, every giant pumpkin grower started out as their first year and networking with the other growers, there's nothing like it. So we'll, we'll start the seminar and we'll go from there and we'll have questions later. Uh, Roy, the mouse has died. <laughs> okay. Just, okay. Okay, so... We're gonna talk about today's course topics, um, site selection, soil, seeds, transplanting, plant care, watering, fruit care, and the contest itself. Giant pumpkins require basically four or five things. Full sun is one of them site selection of at least 15 or 10 by 15, 20 by 25 is optimal. And a lot of the first and second place, third place growers have a 30 by 30 area for each pumpkin. Um, you, want a, you want a good soil that drains. You wanna have availability to water and you want some protection from the wind itself. Soil is also important um, you're, and I recommend the first year growers, I don't recommend getting a soil test. I recommend just feeding a well-balanced fertilizer. Um, pumpkins like organic fertilizer. You wanna feed the soil more than you wanna feed the plant. Um, if you're gonna feed anything, Feed lots of compost and aged manure, not fresh manure. Also, if you're going to feed a water soluble fertilizer, everyone thinks, everyone's gonna ask you when it's growing, that must take a lot of miracle Grow. miracle Grow is not something that pumpkins like because it's super high in nitrogen. You wanna get something that is high in potassium and phosphorus. Okay, in the spring, a lot of growers will, the giant pumpkin growers will actually physically have their pumpkins out in mini hoop houses or greenhouses. And in those hoop houses and greenhouses, they will have soil heating cables laid down, keeping the soil at 70 degrees. And they'll also be heating their greenhouses at night to keep them above 65 degrees. Um, New growers and other growers, you can use something as simple as a clear Tupperware container that you can take the top on and off to, to keep the, 
basically you want to keep the plant warmer at night and kind of give it a little microclimate. Um, I, I, most of the times I basically start my pumpkins inside a hoop house with the soil heating cables in the heat. This year I'm in a new area and um, I get to start with the un unheated greenhouses. Okay, when it, when it comes time for transplanting your, your little seedlings that you're gonna get, your soil should be at least 70 degrees. Right now, it's not, the soil's not warm enough to put the, the pumpkins in the ground. The soil's only about 52 degrees. We need some good hot days yet before things warm up. Um, my guess is by Memorial Day weekend, the soil will be warm enough for the pumpkins to grow. Um, a good indication of the soil being warm enough is the oak trees blossoming or budding out and going to leave and the lilacs blossoming. Okay, when you, when you transplant into the soil, you wanna ensure that if you have a hoop house, you have a way to open up and close that hoop house um, because if it's a closed, closed hoop house, it doesn't take very long for it to get over 120 degrees in there and physically cook your plant. Um, don't grow it, don't dig a pit and make like a big central sink. Um, the pumpkins, these pumpkins are gonna spread out over this entire area and they're gonna set tap roots everywhere. So you wanna fertilize the entire area and not just in a small circle. Um, also, you want to make a raised bed or a mound because the roots need air and it warms up better and gives you better drainage. Okay, when you get your little pumpkins, you're gonna notice that the pumpkins have these big leaves. The leaves, if you look at the screen right now, the leaves that you actually physically see, those are called die cots. Those aren't actually leaves. Those are like a uh, yolk of an egg. They feed the plant itself. If you look in the center of the screen, you'll see that there's a little bud coming out. That's gonna be your first true leaf. And your main vine, is gonna run opposite of your true leaf. This is important because later, as the plant starts growing, you're going to train your plant to fill in the area. And at this time, if you were going to fertilize it, um, a gallon of warm water with some light fertilizers and don't over fertilize. That's the one thing a lot of new growers do is it'll say it recommends one tablespoon per gallon. They'll give it a quarter cup per gallon and they'll physically kill their plant or it'll, it doesn't help promote the growth. Um, also at night, if it gets cold, like it's been getting cold, um, I throw a little cheap styrofoam cooler over top of them to keep them protected. And also at this time, when you plant them in the soil, you want to give it a little, you want to give the plant itself a little bit of insecticide because even though you can't see it, there's, there's things called root maggots that like to eat the roots on the new plants that you have set in the ground. Um, as, you, as you start to work your, your area and you got your site selected, um, you'll see a lot of the giant pumpkin growers will have boards out in their, in their little pumpkin patches themselves. Um, those walking boards so that you avoid soil comp compaction and it helps later with the plant to put all the roots out. You don't have to have them, but I do recommend something so that you're not constantly walking in the same area on the same and making the ground hard as concrete.
Okay. I recommended, I talked earlier about insecticides. Um, if you look at the screen right now, these are your three major culprits of bugs. On the left side of the screen, you have the striped cucumber beetle. They will come in and they will eat everything. They're very visible. Um, they, they like to bring in viruses and disease and they like to eat and chew on your plant. They're vis very visible. Um, when you see them, I recommend spraying a contact insecticide to physically kill them. Um, they come in two waves. They come in an early wave. They lay their, their eggs, hatch their larvae, and they come back in a second wave. So if you can take care of them in the first wave and deal with them throughout the season, you typically won't have too much of a problem. The bug in the middle is a giant pumpkin grower's biggest nemesis. It is the squash vine, or the squash vine borer. This bug You'll see it at night, right as it's starting, as the sun is starting to set. This bug will come and lay eggs on the underside of the leaves. And when those eggs hatch, they hatch into a larva that will burrow down into your vine and they'll physically kill your vine and your season's done with. The plant is, the plant will, you'll come out one day, you'll have a beautiful plant. Next day you'll come out and the entire plant will be wilted and dead. Um, the other, the plant, the, the bug on the far right side is called a squash bug. This bug will, is not as bad as the squash vine borer, but they, they have a tendency to also bring disease and they will, they suck the juice out of your plant. And when they, when they, they'll transmit a disease and a virus also. So you want to, you want to try preventing these three bugs. Okay, we're gonna talk about insecticides now that'll prevent those bugs. Um, there's two kinds of insecticides out there. There's a systemic insecticide. Basically, the chemical is soluble and absorbed by the plant. The insects die when they eat the plant. Um, I'm a chlorprid is the active ingredient. Um, you'll, also, you'll often see it as grub getter or um, bear tree and shrub and stuff like that. I recommend using this systemic insecticide on a giant pumpkin plant. If you want to go organic and, and you're, you want to stay away from insecticides, you can try that, but it's it's the risk you're gonna to have to take and you're gonna to have to figure out something to prevent those other insects from eating your plant. Um, the other kind of insecticide is the contact insecticide. It's absorbed through direct contact. Um, basically you have to hit the bug or you have to hit, you have to spray the plant. And when the bug comes in contact with the insecticide, they die. Um, it's, it's a short, it has a short lifespan and every time it rains or you have heavy dews, the insecticide washes off and it has to be sprayed weekly. The first insecticide, you spray it and forget it, come back, spray again. And that's, I recommend that. The second insecticide is so, is when you start Basically, seeing bugs, you want to kill them. Um, a lot of people are worried about the bees. As long as you don't have flowers going, the bees will not be affected by either one of these insecticides. Um, later on, I'll show you the flowers and what we do. I trim off my male flowers so I don't have to worry about hurting the bees. Okay, we talked. I told you earlier about vine training. If you look at the top left screen, back where the, our top left picture, we train the pumpkin vines into a pattern called the Christmas tree pattern. Basically, as the vines are setting out, you're keeping, there's a main vine and there's secondary vines. 
you make your secondary vines to be perpendicular with your main vine. And it sounds like a lot of work, but it encourages the root growth and it also makes it a lot easier as the season goes on to determine to keep your plant under control. Because these plants, even though I tell you that we plant them in a 500 square foot area, if you let them grow untamed, they would take over your entire yard. I train my vines with these plastic coat hangers that come from Dollar Tree or my wife Jody's closet. Um, thanks, Jody. But basically what I do is I cut, the, I cut the coat hanger in half and I make these two staples. And I don't push, I don't push it down hard on the vine. It's just the support to keep it in place and to stop the wind from blowing it around. Because everywhere in the center picture where you see a leaf coming up, there are roots going down. And that's what you want to encourage. You want to encourage your, your root growth because that's what's going to feed your giant pumpkin later on. We talked about the pumpkins needing water. During the, during the peak growing season for a pumpkin, right about mid-July or so, when you finally have a pumpkin set, they're gonna require about an inch of rain per week. And in a thousand square feet, that's 623 gallons or 90 gallons of water a day. Um, I typically water every other night during the summertime and I overhead water because that allows me to see what my plant is doing and it also allows me to, to bury, my, bury my vines as they're going out. Okay, a lot of people always ask, I only have one pumpkin plant. How am I gonna pollinate it? A giant pumpkin, pumpkins in general will throw both a male flower and a female flower. The female flower, if you look in the top left picture where Linus is, starts off as this little BB shaped item and it starts to grow up into about the size of a ping pong ball. And then one morning, it's gonna open up like the picture to the right. And that means it's ready to pollinate. Um, you can let the bees do the pollination if you've got bees. But as a giant pumpkin grower, I, I control the pollination because I, I give my seeds away to other growers and I wanna have a sure pollination of what I'm at physically growing. Um, if you look at the bottom picture, that is the male flower. The male flower kind of looks like a tulip and it typically starts blooming 10 days before the female is ready. Um, you must use a freshly opened up flower each time. Um, some new growers, they use um, older flowers. The male flower is only good for one day and the female flower is only good, the, the pollination timeline where you can actually physically pollinate them is from like six, six in the morning to two in the afternoon. After that, that pumpkin can't be pollinated. Um, you want, to, you want your plant to fill in as much as possible before you actually physically pollinate a pumpkin on it or have a pumpkin set on it because your plant is what is going to feed your giant pumpkin later in the, the cycle. In all this time, as you're training your plant and everything else, you want to keep up with the weeds. The, the biggest thing a lot of new growers do is they throw the pumpkin plant out in the garden and they think they're gonna come back in October, early October, 
and they're going to have a giant pumpkin. Um, giant pumpkins take a little more work than that. You may be successful doing that by throwing one out in the garden, but, and you probably end up with a two or 300 pounder, but if you do it correctly, you can go anywhere from two to 300 pounds to 2000 pounds. The pumpkin plant is usually ready to pollinate towards the end of June, end of June to mid July. That's when your perfect time period to set one, set your pumpkin is. Um, in my backyard where I grow, I have two plastic lawn chairs. Those plastic lawn chairs, they move across my main vine. As my main vine is growing out, that plastic lawn chair moves with my main with my main vine. And then when I physically pollinate a pumpkin, the chair stays there to shade the pumpkin. Okay. The one the one problem a lot of new growers also have is that they set a pumpkin and they don't plan for future growth on the pumpkin and it's set tight on the vine. You have to put, you have to make some slack in the vine and that slack is called an S curve. If you don't put the S curve in the vine, the pumpkin will pull away from the stem and it'll actually physically split it off from the pumpkin eventually. That these pumpkins typically grow four by four to five by five in the end. So you kind of want to, oh, hang on here. And if you look at the screen, you can see what I'm talking about when I say the Christmas tree pattern. It's basically in the middle where the X is, that's your main vine and it's growing out and the roots running up and down are your secondaries. Okay, once your little baby pumpkin is set, and we'll go we'll go back a little bit. When I set a baby, when I set my little pumpkin, when it's normally about the size, when it's normally about the size of a basketball, I will pollinate every pumpkin on my main vine. I have quite people asking questions. I don't know how to, how to do this. <laughs> I'm not sure how to answer your questions right now. I, I see some people have raised their hands. Um, can you save your question till later and we'll come back to it. And everyone that's on this call right now, I enjoy talking pumpkins. So if you have questions, shoot me texts, shoot me an email. I'll answer your questions all summer long. My goal is to make sure you guys make it to the scale in the fall. And seriously, I enjoy pumpkins. So once, like I was talking, you, you I pollinate every pumpkin on my main vine. And then I watch for their shape and their size. And as the pumpkins get a little bit bigger than a basketball, you have to make the choice. You only want one pumpkin on your giant pumpkin plant. It's a hard decision to make, um, but you have to remember that you're growing a giant pumpkin. If you leave two, two or three pumpkins on the plant, you're gonna end up with some big pumpkins, but not some giant pumpkins. Um, I cover my pumpkins with a big white sheet and it protects the pumpkin from the sun. It protects the pumpkins from the bugs. It protects them, the, the flesh of the pumpkin themselves from the hail. Um, and it also makes your neighbors wonder what's under the sheet. I constantly keep them under the sheet. Um, when the sheet gets wet, Sometimes I'll take the sheet and I'll dry it off and then I'll put it back on the pumpkin. But I typically use a soft cotton sheet to 
protect it. Okay, once you, once you physically have set a pumpkin, you now want to prevent what your next problem is going to be, and that's going to be powdery mildew. Um, once you have powdery mildew, if you look at the lower left, all that, those white spots on your leaves, once you have it, you can't stop it. Prevention is the key to, for powdery mildew, and you want to use a fungicide such as Dacanol, or the one that I've got down below is called Immunox. They're both, every, every insecticide and every chemical I'm talking about here is available at any garden center, at any Fleet Farm, Menards, and Walmart. Um, you wanna, when I say spray this, you put this into a garden sprayer and you spray the top side and the, the bottom side of your leaves. One gallon of spray will easily cover your entire plant. Okay, and once your pumpkin starts growing, it will double in size from day 10 to day 20. It'll, it'll double in size almost every night. You won't see it, but when it's 20 days old to 50 days old, it's at its major growth period and it's gonna put on 25 to 50 pounds a night. Um, a lot of people don't believe that it puts on that much, but you have to grow one to, to see that it does. Um, at this time period, some growers, they get excited and they start overfeeding. If you, if you overfeed your plant, you'll upset set the soil balance because it's the soil that's feeding the pumpkin, the pumpkin plant itself, which entails is going into your pumpkin. Um, you don't overfeed. And again, don't use miracle Grow, which has a lot of nitrogen. If you want to feed a water-soluble fertilizer like that, um, they have some tomato fertilizers, which are low in nitrogen, high in potassium and phosphorus, and also have calcium in them. As your pumpkin is growing too, you're, you're going to keep it perpendicular with your main vine also and kind of squish it back. We do this by, we, we put on, we, we put the, the giant pumpkin itself on a bed of sand and it allows it to move it once it gets above about 200 pounds, it's stuck. You're not gonna move it anymore unless you have a lot of people to help you do it. And also at this time, you can start measuring your pumpkin. That's how we determine how much a pumpkin is growing a night. You can, there's a, a measurement system. And if you watch, if you watch the Chipabella Growers Facebook page, we'll walk you through on what to do. Also, everything in this video or in this PowerPoint, I will be, be I will be making announcements. This is what you should be experiencing now and basically walking you through the, the season. And again, if you have questions, send us a send us an IM or kick me an email and I'll answer your questions. Okay, once, as your pumpkin's growing, the average pumpkin will grow anywhere from up to about 90 days. And then as, the, as you're towards the end of September, mid-September to end of September, as the nights start getting cooler and we start getting froth, frost, um, you wanna protect your pumpkin so it doesn't freeze. And when it comes time to picking, when you grow giant, giant pumpkins, you're gonna need a skid steer to pick them with. Um, if you have a smaller size pumpkin, we pick them when they're small, we pick them with a, tarp, with a tarp folded over and strong people to put them up on a pallet. Um, 
again, when if you get to that point and you've got a pumpkin and you don't know what to do with it, give us a call and we'll do, we'll network out because that's what pumpkin growers do. You'd be, you'd be amazed that if you have a question or if you have an issue, pumpkin growers are very friendly people and they want to see you make it to the scale. Um, once you get your pumpkin onto your pallet, you want to, you get, you have to physically strap it down to prevent your pumpkin from shifting. Um, I've seen several vehicles where they've lost their pumpkin or the pumpkin has slid off their pallet and both damaged the pumpkin and damaged their vehicle and no one wants to see that. So you have to strap them down heavily to keep them from shifting. And as your, as your season is growing on, going on, take lots of pictures. You're, there's nothing better than seeing lots of pictures and everyone else will sometimes, if you have a question, post a picture and we'll respond back what we think the problem is. If you look in the top corner there, that's the first pumpkin I ever grew. My first year, it was 374 pounds. And that was in the year 2001. And you'll notice the, the pumpkins that I also grow are big and orange pumpkins. Um, there's a contest called the Howard Dill Award that is awarded to not only the, the it's awarded to the prettiest pumpkin at the event. And that's, an honor that I always like to win. Um, some resources for new growers. Of course, we have the we have the Triple Valley Giant Pumpkin Growers Facebook page. We also have the St. Croix Giant Grower, Giant Pumpkin Growers. Um, the Wisconsin Giant Pumpkin Growers also have their own website. And there is a, a website called bigpumpkins.com. That's the website that got me interested in draw, growing giant pumpkins. And you can also send me an IM or an email at mail at greatpumpkin.net or my phone number is there for you to send me a text if you need to. So are we ready to open this up for questions? I'm ready for questions. Okay, well, for everyone that's on the call, um, if, if you are on through a computer, uh, you could use the raise your hand feature. It should be on the left-hand side of your screen. Or if you're calling in, looks like we have one person calling in on this webinar, you can use asterisk or star nine, and we'll be able to see your questions come in in order. So again, it's if you're using your computer or the Zoom app, it is the raise your hand feature. And if you're calling in, it's, it's star or asterisk nine. So if you have any questions, just, just press those buttons and we'll take you one by one. And the, don't, ever, don't everybody jump at once. Yeah. <laughs> the, the little seminar that I gave was basically a introduction. There, you can go so deep into this hobby that are just crazy so. so looks like we have one person calling in um okay. or raising their hand it's it's uh candy and so we'll, we'll allow her to talk here um, candy uh, are you here can you hear me yep. yep so do you have a problem with deer or raccoon or rabbits getting into the vines or have you found any effective ways to keep them out um I don't, I physically, during the summertime, I have rabbits that grow, are living underneath my pumpkin foliage. The rabbits don't really affect my pumpkins. Um, the only time I've ever had a problem is if there's a really dry season and my pumpkins have lots of green foliage and the grass is starting to die. Um, the only way to prevent them is to either fence in the area or 
you have to spray something like pest away or something like that to prevent the deer from eating your plants. Uh, the, the white sheets over top of the pumpkins will stop, the, the deer won't eat through your white sheet. Mm -hmm. But that one, last year I had, I have a satellite patch that I typically grow at out at Valley Pasture Farm in Elk Mound. Mm -hmm. One night the cows and the sheep got out and ate about 1,200 pounds of pumpkin. The actual pumpkins they ate, okay. <laughs> there, was nothing, there, was, there was nothing, as I came down the hill to look, at, my sheets would always blow off out there and I couldn't see my sheets. And then I all of a sudden realized that I couldn't see my sheets because my pumpkins were no longer there. Oh. But um, there's, there's different things you can do to try preventing them. But if deer are a major problem, you're going to have to have a fence around it. But I typically don't have a problem with the animals eating the pumpkins as much as I have a problem with the insects and everything else. But other, for, as, for deer, I just, I, I haven't had that experience yet. And my new growing spot now, the other night I saw 15 deer standing in the field and I'm hoping they're not gonna be a problem. Mike wants to jump in here. Uh, th this is Mike Golad. I'm also a, a giant pumpkin grower. Um, one thing you do have to watch out for is mice, especially late in the fall when it gets cold. They might think that being underneath your giant pumpkin is a, is a nice place to be and little food, they'll, they'll uh, chew a hole in them and then suddenly one day your giant pumpkin will go down. So you got you to gotta watch out. A lot of people set um, mouse traps around their giant pumpkins as it gets later in the fall. Yep. It's like we... Is that, is that good candy or do you have anything else? No, that was good. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, it looks like we have a few questions in the Zoom webinar chat. Can, can you see those, Shannon? Uh, trying to see what... Okay, it looks like we'll take the first one from, we'll take the first one from Craig here. Is, is there any way to avoid a cavity on the underside? Yes. That's a very good question. Um, the, cavity, the cavity, basically the pumpkin gets a concave area on the underside. What you want to do is, we basically grow on something called millwire fabric, but you don't have to grow on that. You could grow on um, a bed of sand or something like that. The, the cavity on the underside of the pumpkin is caused by friction. And basically the pumpkin is growing faster than the pumpkin is sliding and you want to get rid of the friction. And so we grow on low wire fabric and sand and basically the pumpkin slides right across it then. Okay. Looks like we have a couple more here. This one's from, this one's from Brooke Bailing. And, and the question is, when I grew my first pumpkin, I struggled to keep the tertiary vines under control. My main vine was and secondaries got so big that I couldn't get in between them to get the tertiaries out. What can I do to pre prevent this ne next time? Okay. As your pumpkin is growing and you're training your vines, since you the main vine and secondaries are, as you're going to bury, as we shallow... It's hard to grow here if we are successful. I don't know how to get them up the hill. Um, as your as your pumpkin is growing and your vines are going out and you're bearing and, and training your vines, I pinch all my tertiaries off before you ever physically see them. That along with pinching the female or the male and the female flowers off, I try keeping up with that as I'm training my, my plant out. Um, the, the only other way to get rid of your tertiaries is I have a, a long hole and it's got a sharp edge on it and I cut those the tertiary vines off. But it is, it is a problem to 
keep up with them because otherwise it becomes a mess and you have vines growing everywhere. Does that answer your question, Brooke? Looks like she, she had sent that, she said yes. Okay. So that one more question for Mary. I live in town and I'm not sure if I can do this. I don't, I don't plan it until the end of May, correct? Do I just leave it in the container it comes in for now? Is there a place where we can rent a piece of land to raise a pumpkin? Um, there's, some of the people that are growing this year are growing in community gardens. Um, and what I recommend is if you pick up a plant today and it's in the little five inch pot and you can't plant for a long period of time, I recommend you pot it up into a larger pot. Right now, my, my pumpkins are in large five gallon, almost like five gallon buckets, but they're, they're special air pots. Um, they'll stay in there for a while, but you don't want to, you don't want to keep them in the, in the pots too long because they'll become root bound. The, the roots will literally start going in a big circle and it will slow your plant down. It's not, it's not the end of the season type thing, but if you can get them into the dirt, when the dirt is as warm as pop, when it's 70 degrees, they're going to grow the best at that period. And I don't know anywhere right now to rent a piece of land to raise a pumpkin. I, last year, I've been growing in the same soil for 10 years and I, since I've been growing in the same soil for 10 years and I'm constantly adding more organic matter, I got a soil disease called Pythium and Fusarium and basically it's, it's hard to control and it's from planting in the same spot all the time. I sent a Facebook message out to and said, hey, does anyone have some land for me to grow on? Here are my requirements. I need water and it needs to be full sun. And I had a, a local person that volunteered land for me and we'll see how that turns out this year. Mary, this is, this is Mike Golat. If, if you're really serious about wanting to grow one, um, I might have a spot where you could, could do it but it's down by Strum, so it's a, it's a little bit of ways away. But if you want, you can uh, contact me. I'm city, city administrator at City of Altoona. So it's just, uh, oh, you live in Strum. Oh, well, uh, that might work out really well. You, you might be able to help me more than uh, I help you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that, that might work out really well. Um, if you can, you want to write down my phone number. I'll give it to you and you can give me a call here in a, in a little bit. It's 360-490-0438. And I think you have, you have email addresses for everyone, right? Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mary. So if anyone else has a question, again, you would use the raise your hand feature through the app if you're on a computer or, or any other device, or else if you're on the phone, you would use star or asterisk nine. So if you have any questions, we're kind of standing by here to, to take them as they come. There was a couple participants that were, when we were on this screen that did the raise your hand. If you could ask those questions now, I can try answering your question. One second, we had a question. Um, we have another question from Craig. Um, any big disadvantages to terminating the main after the pumpkin is set? Um, good question, Craig. There's, there's some people that believe that pumpkin, the pumpkin flow, the, the energy of a pumpkin flows only one direction. And there's others that believe that the new growth is constantly 
sending hormones back, encouraging growth. Um, I don't see a disadvantage to terminating the main vine after the pumpkin is set. To me, it makes it a lot easier because I don't have to throw the big S curve in there. I can simply pull the pumpkin back to where it needs to set. And I've done a couple of pumpkins with the main vine terminated because it's basically, I, I grow in a fenced in area and it has a picket fence. And when I reach the end of the patch, I'm at the end of the patch. Um, and Craig, you've grown, you've seen some how some of the, the bigger growers are growing where they're no, they're not doing with the Christmas tree pattern. They're, they're growing basically in like a big spider pattern and they must know something and it's working for them. So we had another question. Uh, this one's from Denise. And she asks, so are there uh, plants available today? And the answer is yes. And we'll be um, doing curbside and, and front porch place um, on the plaza and River Prairie Park. And we'll be doing that from 2.30 to 3.30. And if something happens to your plant that we give you and you're seriously interested in, in, in growing, um, contact us. Um, because right now, giant pumpkin growers always prepare for the worst. Um, so I can, I can physically, in the area that I'm in this year, I'm going to be growing four giant pumpkin plants. I actually have like eight to ten already started. And so I always have pumpkin plants that after Memorial Day, I'm looking to get rid of. And also, we, so these plants you're going to be getting today, we started them on Sunday. They're not poking out of the ground yet, but they, they should be just fine. When you get them, you're want, going to want to keep them at about 85 degrees and nice and warm until they come up. Um, but if they don't come up, I started 138 uh, plants, so we, we've got plenty of plants. Um, we just got to make sure that they germinate and come up good. So everyone that stops by today will be able to get two, two pumpkin plants, um, one for a backup or if they want to grow a couple, just let us know how many you want actually. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's really a fun and addictive sport. And the, the, what we're trying to do here is, is grow giant pumpkin growing in the Chippewa Valley. We want this area to be the hub of giant pumpkin growing for the state of Wisconsin. We started the River Prairie Ginormous Pumpkin Festival last year and we had more pumpkins here than any other contest in the whole state. So we want to build on that and um, the way to do that is to get local people interested and actually the prize money is pretty good. You know, you win thousands of dollars if you win the win the prize. I think a couple thousand dollars last year was the prize money. We're trying to grow that um, so that we're the, the the biggest and richest prize purse in the in the region, tri-state region. And we want to, if if you're interested and you want to help with the festival, we uh, would love your help. It's September 29th this year. Um, that's a Saturday, and it's it's a good time to celebrate all the hard work that you've put in over the, the year. Oh, I'm sorry, the 26th, 26th, yeah. So, any other questions from anyone? Don't be bashful or shy asking your questions. There are a couple of questions that if you are growing giant pumpkins that all your friends are going to ask you. First thing they're gonna ask you, do you feed them milk? That is an old wives tale that comes from Laura Ingalls Wilder books. Um, a pumpkin has no way of physically absorbing milk. So no, you don't wick them. You don't feed them milk. You don't feed them. They, there's so many things out there that people hear. Um, they're also, people are gonna ask you if they're gen genetically modified 
no, there's no market out there for genetically modified giant pumpkins. Um, I always joke that, yes, they're, we're crossed with a blue whale and bamboo because both those are the fastest growing animals and plants on the earth. So um, there's, you've, everyone's got some questions and I'm sure you're all kind of, it's, you've, we've piqued your interest in, just feel free to ask questions. If, if you wanna uh, pick up your plants to, today, they're gonna be down uh, at River Prairie uh, on the plaza in front of uh, River Prairie Center. It's that the plaza with the lights on it uh, across for where, where we have the summer concert festival. So you can pull right over there. Uh, there's a kind of a wide spot in the road where the food trucks usually park. You can just pull right in there and we'll get you your plants. Uh, we can put them right in the car for you. I have a, I have a couple more notes. It looks like we have a question um, from Mary. Will you guys be there when we, we pick up the plants? Yes, we will. So if you come on down, we'll, you'll, you'll see us. Um, I had a couple notes I wanted to mention before we sign off the call. Um, I'm going to be putting this video on the Chippewa Valley Giant Pumpkin Growers uh, Facebook, on the River Prairie Festival event page, and the City of Altoona and River Prairie um, general Facebook pages. I'll also put it on the Ginormous Pumpkin Festival website for viewing. So I'm going to be putting it out there. Um, you know, for more updates, and recurring updates, please follow Chippewa Valley Giant Pumpkin Growers. You'll, you'll get a lot of updates from us and we'll try to keep that updated as much as possible. And then again, the River Prairie Ginormous Pumpkin Festival is gonna be taking place on Saturday, September 26th. It's a hoot, we, we definitely wanna see you there. Um, so make plans to attend, put it on your calendars. And you, you don't have to wait to come and get your plants, we're, we're here. We're just gonna get the plants ready right after we sign off here. So you don't have to wait till 2.30. If, you're, if you wanna come down, swing down through at Front Porch Place um, where the food trucks usually are and we'll get you your plants. So I, I guess with that, and it looks like we don't have any other questions. I think we'll sign off. Shannon, do you have anything else you wanna add? Nope, just have fun and learn for your first season. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, Shannon, for, for your presentation. And uh, thanks for, for everyone for attending. And this is a huge part of our virtual River Prairie Festival this year. And we're looking forward to a great season of pumpkin growing. So thanks again for attending. And I'll be looking out for the video on Facebook and on the festival's event website. So ha have a great day.